بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد Kahari, are we on the Facebook? Today, inshallah, our uh, class uh, will be uh, regard Hadith Khawla Al-Ansariyah radiyallahu anha qalat qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna rijalan yatakhawaduna fi malillahi bighayri haqq falahum al-nar yawm al-qiyamah akhrajahu al-Bukhari Khawla Al-Ansariyah, may Allah be pleased with her said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said some men acquire Allah's property such as funds of Muslim states, treasury, zakat, etc. And they will go to hell on the day of resurrection. Um, acquired Allah's property, it means they take, or in other words, they steal, or they use uh, from uh, the money uh, that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it doesn't be a, a money that they're not supposed to touch, they're not supposed to use for personal uh, benefit. And Nabi Wasallam said, they will go to hell on the day of resurrection. Um, this hadith is interesting because we're talking about the bad manners and um, warning people from bad manners and bad character, character traits. Uh, and one of the thing is, no doubt, one of the worst quality can be in a person stealing, especially stealing from the public money, you know, and taking uh, properties that they don't, doesn't belong to them, uh, as well as uh, people who have no uh, conscience or fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to dealing with the public money, with money that it doesn't belong to them. Uh, and I met people in my life who would be very careful about their salah and about their siyam, about this and this and that. But they are so careless when it comes to the money. They don't care halal, haram, allowed, not allowed. There is cheating, there's no cheating, there is riba, there's, it doesn't matter. Even though you, some of them even might make qiyam al-layl. And it's, a, it's, a, it's ajeeb, yani I've seen this as to be very strange. Uh, there is people when it comes to money, they're just out of the equation. They, they don't consider the sharia and the akhlaq and the manner. You might see someone who's very nice to you, and you talk and you have good relationships and very, very good. But when it comes to dealing with them in business, all the akhlaq is out of the window, the manners. And you completely see a different person. That's why Umar radiallahu anhu, when somebody said, I know so and so. He said, you really know him? He said, yes. He said, have you traveled with him? Have you did business with him? Because when you do business with someone, you get to know who really they are, what kind of akhlaq and manners they have. So um, this hadith talking about another character trait, that you should avoid, which is that you deal with the money of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way which is not lawful by taking from it, misusing it, uh, spending it in the wrong way, stealing from it, and so forth. Um, so uh, this uh, hadith also very uh, suitable to the previous hadith. Why? Because the previous hadith talked about rulers and abuse so we talked about the previous hadith was about um, someone who, for example, will um, uh, anger and what anger will lead to. Uh, we talked about uh, physical abuse. And he, we, we talked about verbal abuse of cursing and saying things like that. Now the hadith talk about another type of abuse, which is a financial abuse, which is we take people's money. You take money that it doesn't belong to you, especially when this money belongs to the public. And since we've been talking about rulers, and he talked about the akhlaq and the manners that related to the individual, family members, society at large, then he talked about certain akhlaq and manners 
uh, related to the rulers and the people in power, and this is one of it, because it's known that rulers will abuse the public wealth, will ab abuse the money, will abuse the budget that they have. They mishandle it, they take from it. You, we see people who start, Aisha she said, my father used to be rich until he became a Khalifa. When he became a Khalifa, he became a poor man. And he doesn't have money anymore. And today, it's the opposite. It's the guy is poor until he became elected, and until he became in power. When he became power, he became rich. And after, before that, they have nothing. You know, it's weird, like when you hear about someone who just started their life or their wealth, because you know, when you go to public office, you have to document all your wealth. And all of a sudden, after six years or 10 years of being in Senate or being in Congress or being in, in Parliament or being in power, you have $23 million wealth. You know, your salary is just an average salary. You're never gonna make that amount of money. Where, where this money came from, you know? Somebody became a billionaire, billions and billions and billions of dollars and, and millions of dollars that they have. Where do you get that from? Uh, and unfortunately, through, through history, there is a lot of abuse for the public wealth. Yes, one of the Muslim countries are the richest country in the world, but still Muslims are the poorest people in the world. It's the richest country in the world. There is more natural resources, you name it. I, I, just to give you an example, see how the corruption is. France, France, do not have a single, a single gold mine. While they have the biggest saving of gold in the whole entire world, definitely more than any European country. And if I'm not mistaken, worldwide. They have unbelievable amount of gold. While West African countries, and mostly Muslim countries as well, uh, they have gold more than any other places in the world. But yet, nothing in their saving, nothing the country owns from that gold. Actually, most of that gold transferred to France. And that's why there is a very critical political relationship between West Africa and France. Anyway, but the point is, where is these African countries, which is wealth, an unbelievable amount of wealth, but still you see how poor Africa is in many Muslim countries as well, and many countries in Asia and so forth. Uh, anyway, so uh, this hadith is, is very suitable talk, is still talk about the rulers and, and the rights that, and the thing that they should be careful from, which is one of it is to extend their hands to take or to waste the public money. Khawla bin Tuqais, usually we translate or give a little bit of uh, a short biography for the, uh, speak, the, the Sahaba who not very well known. Khawla bin Tuqais uh, ibn Qahd or Fahd. الأنصارية الخزرجية النجارية. So she's from Bani Najjar, the Prophet Sallam's أخوال, the Prophet Sallam's uncles, from his mother's side. خولة, uh, she was married to Hamza, uh, the Prophet Sallam uncle, Ibn Abd al-Muttalib. So she was very close to the Prophet Sallam, and uh, she uh, had a child from him. يعني له يعلى وعمارة and two daughters. Uh, then, uh, after Hamza was killed in the Battle of Uhud, she married to Hanzalah ibn Nu'man, and she got from him uh, Muhammad, his son Muhammad, and she became known as Ummi Muhammad, even though he's not the older of her uh, children. Anyway, this hadith reported by Bukhari, and uh, it has a story, and the story goes like this. That uh, Sa'id al Maqburi said, Dakhalna ala khawla. We, we visited uh, Khawla bin Tiqais. She used to be married to Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, and now she's married to Al Nu'man ibn Ajlan. Faqulna ya Umma Muhammad. They went to visit this woman. And they said, Ya Umma Muhammad. As I told you, she became known with Umma Muhammad. Would you tell us, okay, something that you heard from the Prophet? Sayyid al-Muqbari is Tabi, successor, didn't see the Prophet so Can you tell us something that you heard directly from the Prophet So her husband, Nu'man, looked at her and he said, Umburi madha tuhadditheen. 
Be careful before you tell them anything. Be very careful. In the hadith of Rasulullah sallam shadid. Don't tell them anything about the Prophet sallam unless you are hundred percent sure. Because making any mistakes in the hadith or saying the Prophet said this and that and he didn't say it, it's a very serious matter. قالت بئس مالي أحدثهم عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بما ينفعهم فأكذب على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Worst person I will be if I tell you something about the Prophet that you might benefit from it, but it is not true, and I will not benefit. I will get sinned because of it. That's the worst person I would be. No, I would never do that. I heard the Prophet said, قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا خضيرة حلوة من أخذ مالا بحله يبارك الله له فيه الدنيا this world خضيرة حلوة it is attractive it's beautiful it is sweet okay whoever earn money in it from a halal source a lawful way Allah will bless him and bless whatever he earned وَرُبَّ مُتَخَوِّضٍ فِي مَالِ اللَّهِ وَمَالِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فِي مَا شَاءَتْ نَفْسُهُ لَهُ النَّارُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ And they might be a person who would uh, uh, collect and take and uh, acquire uh, money from the money that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the public wealth here and something belonged to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم again this is the state money uh, according to what this to fulfill that so that person fulfill his desires of earning or taking this money such person have uh, in the day of uh, such person will enter hellfire in the day of judgment will enter hellfire in the day of judgment and another narration Khawla also said in another uh, incident she told people the money was mentioned in front of the Prophet wealth and money then in Nabi Sallam said the money is attractive, sweet, حلوة خضرة. من أصابه بحقه بورك فيه. If you earn the money in the right way, Allah will bless it. And if you start collecting according to your desires from the wealth that belong to Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and taken from the public wealth, النار. You in the day of judgment going to hellfire. There is a word that the Prophet used. It wouldn't make sense if I literally translate to English. He said, يَتَخَوَّضُونَ فِي مَالِ اللَّهِ أَوْ يَخُوضُونَ فِي مَالِ اللَّهِ Inquire, take. But the word يَخُوض is, is more powerful than just saying in English, takes, he takes, or he collect, or inquire. What's يَخُوض? الخوض في اللغة العرب It's when, when you go to Galveston and you go to the beach. Okay? When you walk into the water, especially when it's not cold. How do you walk? Most of the people, they walk like this, that's right. Like, you kind of go or you jump into the water, that's right, excited, that's right. You, you don't walk to the water or when you're going to enter water. It's not the same way you enter, you walk in a, in a for example, in a, in a at workplace or where you work formally in, in the master, that's right? You became more of a curler. And also, you come all together when you go to the water. Okay, that's right? So, uh, that's what al-khawd really means. Al-khawd asluhu min al-khawdi fil ma. When you go inside, became a kind of curler, so you don't really care. You just, you know, you're just having fun and you go inside. So, the Prophet was trying to say that those people who reach to the wealth, like the way you go to the water, you know, as if that wealth is the water, can you, it's, it's a figure of speech, it's like a metaphor. Can you imagine this is the water, is the wealth, okay? And the person just go to it. He just want to get from it as much as they can. As is, you, when you go to the water, you want to dip yourself in it as much as you can. Bil unlawful, why? They collect this money in an unlawful way. Malillah from the, the wealth that belongs to Allah. Why do you think the Prophet reminding us, he didn't say, 
the public wealth or the state wealth. He said, the wealth that belongs to Allah to warn you. As if you're stealing from Allah directly. And the reality is, all wealth belongs to Allah. Even the money that I have in my pocket belongs to Allah. Not only the state money is belong to Allah. That's right. What's the proof that this money in my pocket belong to Allah? Can I use it any way I want? As a Muslim? No. I can't. There is halal and haram. I can't take it and purchase alcohol. Haram. Can I burn it? I'm not allowed to burn it. It's haram. You see? Can I say, this is my money. You know what? I'm going to give my daughter half of my money. And this daughter is not going to get anything. And my son going to take 1% of my wealth. Can I do that? No, I can't. I'm going to put all my money to my cat. To Bagheera, my cat. Can I do that? No, I can't. See, that shows you it's not your money. You know what? It's zakat. You have to give it. It's not up to you to say, I'm, gonna give it. I'm not going to give the zakat. And you know what? I want to give zakat to my cousin. No, it's not to you. To you. Allah decide who deserves the zakat. So the reality is every money, every wealth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here he referred to the state money, to the public money, as Allah's and his messenger's money. Why? To make you think twice before reaching out to that money and touch it. Reminding you that this is the wealth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if you're stealing from Allah. Or as if you're wasting the money of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Some ulama said, no, actually since the Prophet ﷺ said, from the wealth of Allah, they mishandled the wealth of Allah, that will include the state money and your personal money too. So in any misuse of money, Based on this hadith is a sin. You understand? Because he said, Malullah. So Malullah is the state money and also your personal money. So any misuse of the money or taking an individual's people or I take your money without cheat you or steal from you, that will also include in the hadith. The Tinnabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Rijal and men, here men or women, it doesn't really matter. Just uh, is not specifically only to men. طيب, what do we learn from this hadith? Number one. في الحديث رد علوات عن أن يأخذوا من المال شيئا بغير حق. It warned the rulers and the people in charge of public wealth is to take from the money of the public or to what is not allowed for them to take or to steal from it or to misuse it. Okay? Also, it includes one more thing that they're not allowed to prevent those who deserve that money from receiving it. Yani, and I'm in charge of zakat. I'm, I know, for example, a, a real incident of a masjid that they came and they asked me. They have five million dollars zakat in their account. And they came to me, Sheikh, we have in our account five million dollars in zakat. Okay? Okay, I said, and how many people, poor people in your community? Then he said, actually, most of this money goes to pay for electricity and gas and landscape. And we, we don't. He said, Sheikh, wallahi, it is, it is sad. I can tell you that poor people get turned away. No money, no money, no money. And we still collect it. He said, we have like almost $1 million just as a cattle fiddle over the last three years. It is, that's also, they are misusing the money of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the wrong way because they don't give it to the people who deserve it. Two, this hadith shows you that wealth is something respected. A lot of people don't have respect for money. They think it is just nothing. No, it is in Islam, it is important. That's why Nabi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ja'alaha qiyaman. Yani it is one of the reasons this wealth is to make you stand strong and stand independent as an individual, as family, as society. 
That's why in society, wealth is very important. And Nabi Sallallahu put a lot of rules and regulation guidelines, how the public wealth should be handled, how it should be managed. Also family, that's why Allah Subh'anaHu Wa said, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ مِنْكُمْ طَوْلًا أَنْ يَنْكِحَ If you don't have the money to marry, you should not marry. Because marriage without income is not marriage. You have to have the income. You have to have the ability to establish a home. And for individual, the Nabi Sallallahu said, to go work with your hand is better than you ask for sadaqah. Why? Because you want. And Nabi Sallallahu said that the person who Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala give him wealth and give him money and Allah bless him with knowledge, he is one of the best people in this world. Um, also shows you that since it is so uh, important element in our life, we should treat it correctly. Three, this hadith warn us to misuse and mishandle wealth. It doesn't matter. The wealth, your own wealth, your own money, other people's wealth that they trusted you with, or the general public wealth. Uh, also, this hadith tells you that it is a major sin من كبائر الذنوب التعدي على حرمة الأموال the sanctioning sanction for the wealth for other people's wealth it is forbidden to break that sanctuary or to break that trust if I trust you with wealth and you misuse it you mishandle it or you waste it or you steal from it this is a major sin a major Sin. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يسرق السارق حين يسرق وهو مؤمن. When a person commits the crime of stealing, thefting, the theft when he is stealing is not a mu'min. Yani it's not a true believer. Or uh, at that point, his iman and his in faith and his belief in the prohibition of stealing is not there, is not there. So this is basically one of the uh, a hadith that shows you it is a major sin. وَلَا يَنْتَهِبُ نُهْبَةً ذَاتَ شَرَفْ يَرْفَعُ النَّاسُ إِلَيْهَا فِيهَا أَبْصَارَهُمْ حِينَ يَنْتَهِبَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ وَلَا يَغِلُّ أَحَدُكُمْ حِينَ يَغِلْ وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَإِيَّاكُمْ إِيَّاكُمْ And also when a person steal from the public wealth or the war booties uh, uh, the, the money that you collect after war, after the, after war, which belong to the public, when somebody take from that, it is also not, a, he's not a mu'min when he is doing that. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Sunan Abi Dawood, Abu Huraira said, خَرَجْنَ مَعَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ إِلَىٰ خَيْبَرُ We went to the Prophet to Khaybar. فَفَتَحَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا We were able to conquer Khaybar. فَلَمْ نَغْنَمْ ذَهَبًا وَلَا وَرِقًا We did not come back with any gold or silver. Why? Because they made a deal with the people of Khaybar. غَنِمْنَ الْمَتَاعَ وَالطَّعَامَ وَالثِّيَابِ Oh, what we got? We got food, we got clothes, we got, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, يعني, uh, goods, you know, nothing much. ثُمَّ انْطَلَقْنَا إِلَى الْوَادِ وَمَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَبْدٌ لَهُ وَهَبَهُ لَهُ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ جُذَامٍ يدعى رفاعة بن زيد من بني الضبيب فلما نزلنا الوادي قام عبد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يحل رح له فرمي بسهم فكان فيه حتفه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم with him at that time a servant okay uh, a slave servant who uh, was with us and when we came uh, and settled in the valley one of the mushrikeen shot an arrow and basically killed that slave. We said, Hani and Lahu Shahada. Wow, lucky him. It's just one arrow hit only one person, that person, and he died as a shaheed. Then in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No, he's not. He is not. Somebody just was killed. He's in the army of the Muslim, killed by the hand of the kuffar and the mushrikeen. He is there to defend the Prophet. And in the Bishop said, it's not. قَالَ وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهَا I swear by the one my soul in his hand, which is Allah. إِنَّ الشَّمْ لَتَتَ لَلْتَهِبُ عَلَيْهِ نَارًا أَخَذَهَا مِنَ الْغَنَائِمِ لَمْ تُصِبْهَا الْمَقَاسِمِ What this person did, 
he took just a piece of cloth. Just a piece of cloth. He took it, you know, without declaring it. Basically, steal it. He stole that piece of cloth. In Nabi Sallallahu said, it is like a fire around his neck, around his body. People became scared. And all of a sudden, start people bring, he said, Ya Rasulullah, by the way, I took also this pair of shoes. Ya Rasulullah, this sandal, by the way, I took it too. Only one, one sandal, not two, just one. I, 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 I didn't know, I thought I can just keep it. People became scared. Then in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a sandal made of fire, a pair of shoes made of fire. If you kept it, everything you should be declared, even as small as this. Can you imagine this man? This is someone took from the public, public wealth what? A pair of shoes, a sandal, a piece of cloth, and it's fire on, on, on his body in his grave. And that's a mujahid. That's a person that is shaheed. That's a person with the Prophet Sallallahu a sahabi. What do you think of those people who took the, taking the public money today is going to happen to them? بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he basically misused this wealth or spending it in an unlawful way. So that means you're allowed to use the public money. You're allowed to spend from it. You're allowed to use it, but in the haq, in the, in the right way, the truth, for the right reason. If you've been trusted with the money for your, for let's say, your uncle die and your cousins are young, and you've been trusted with their wealth, some orphan, some friends, a wife, her husband died, and he left money as an inheritance for his sons. The wife is responsible to take care of that money. You know, you became in charge of the budget or the masjids or organization. That's a public wealth. How you handling and how you using it, it is a serious matter. Also, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in one of the narrations of Bukhari Muslim said, those people in the Ladi Yatakhawad fil Ma'al, those who will basically feel free to deal with the money and take from it and misuse it. He will end up like the one who keeps eating and never gets satisfied. In another word, if you are used to steal once, you're going to do twice and three and four and five and six. If you mishandle the money, you will, if you open this door, it will be a habit. You will not stop at something small or big. That's why Nabi was strict, even with a pair of shoes. Because if you open this door, it will not close. And Abi Sa'id al Khudri قال, طيب. uh, also, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa told us, that, or, or we can learn from this hadith, stealing from the, the money which is the Muslim earn out of after a war, it is haram. It is uh, haram. And there is many a hadith in relation to this uh, uh, concept, showing that uh, uh, stealing even as much as dirham or dirhamain, or taking dirham, which is one small amount of silver, okay, uh, 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 was the reason for the Prophet not to pray on someone, because he took a dirham or dirhamain. They said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, please pray on him. He said, no, he's tall, and I'm not going to pray on him. Because of that. The shafa'ah of Muhammad was not given to him as a punishment for him to take just a dirham from the public's wealth. طيب. Um, among the manifestation of the mishandling of public wealth, number one, to spend the money on yourself and your own leisure. When I hear, for example, about a people who use public money, like a donations money and public money, and they live in the United States, okay, and some of them outside of the United States, 
they come and they travel from overseas, the board of this organization, on a first class, whatever. They come to America and they have a board meeting. Where is the board meeting? In the five star hotels in Honolulu, in Hawaii. For no reason. And it's not like those people are poor. They are like very wealthy. But still, the one who pay for it is the general public wealth. Spending on her, her. Somebody came and asked me a question in one of the Muslim countries. Okay? I just I want you to imagine the amount of, of, of waste. He said, Sheikh, there is a very fancy hotel. It's a Hilton hotel. Six stars, seven stars, some crazy kind of, It's like above average. He said, I ask the ruler of that country to give me, a, a, you know, an exception to stay there for the two weeks or something like that, and the ruler will cover the expenses, like the government will pay for me. Okay, so I write, okay, the government, he knows someone, okay, no problem. So he said, yeah, what, what some of my friends do, and I want to ask, it's halal haram, told me to do that. He said, my friends do the same thing, but when they go to the hotel, they never check out. So he'll go stay three, four, five days, two, three weeks. Then he goes back to his hometown. And stays, uh, two months later, he comes back and he has still the room in his name. And he stays for about two, three weeks. Why? Because if he check out, he has to apply for another letter and it takes time and there is possibility they will not give it to him. So they don't check out. They keep the tap open. So he asking me, Sheikh, is this halal? I said to him, Habibi, it is not halal the first three, four days that you stayed. <laughs> it's not <laughs> the first four, four, five days that they give it to you. It's not their, it's not their money. They're giving you from the government, from the, from the wealth of the people. That's haram. But just, so using this money for personal use, for friends, for family members, all this not allowed. Also, sometimes the public wealth are spended on things that are not, it, it, it's no benefit from it. Actually, there's more harm. In Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, when he became the Khalifa, they told him we need this hundreds of thousands of pieces of gold to basically make a new curtain for Al-Kaaba. Every year we spend that amount of money to make a new curtain. Then he said, no, I prefer to spend that money to cover the body of so many hungry, naked, young men and women around the world who don't have enough money to buy clothes in the winter. I would like to cover them, not to cover Al-Kaaba. Kaaba has one, alhamdulillah. I don't need to give make it every year. قَلْ أَصْرِفُهَا فِي أَجْسَادٍ عَارِيَ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ it is sad when you see that they bring in some countries singers and, and models and, 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 and uh, artists and they give them millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. And we spend all that man, amount of money. And when it comes to helping the poor, the poor in, that, in the same country or around them, the refugees and the people displaced because of war around the world. It, it, is, it hurts. When you hear that somebody in a country where poverty is so noticeable, they will spend, for example, a, a, a $30,000 just to purchase red carpet for that person to walk on it when he comes out of $30,000 for a carpet for one minute thing. While well, they have thousands of people don't have even $30 uh, dollars a month. When you spend that money on, on, on parties and, and, and leaders, while there is necessities are missing. Where is the education, health, uh, providing food and shelter for people is not there. 
It, it, it hurts. Also, when you spend uh, uh, money, look, I was so offended. I'm not sure. I think this is an annual uh, tradition in America. But I was so offended when I saw the turkey that we, the, the president burden every year, two turkeys, that's right, every year. You know, prior to that, they were check in in a hotel, in a, in a luxury hotel, a five star hotel. Have you seen this? Do you know that? There is a hotel next to, they bring them in the news. And you know, it's like a full hotel, like a suite, a, like a presidential suite. They let the two turkeys in the, this presidential suite for a couple of like hours or whatever, or a day, you know, because they bring them from another state usually. So they check in and they treat them royal because the president will, what kind of nonsense is that? Come on, I'll take you to, you know, down in Hellcraft. How about if I take you to Pasadena? How about if I take you down to the fifth world, downtown? How about if I take you to Philly or to DC, just down on the road from the White House? And you see the people who have, you know, dying because they don't have shelter and basics. Wasting in, uh, uh, in uh, government money is unbelievable. We spend 50, uh, we spend 85 million dollars on unfinished hotel in Kabul. Well, I know if it's, if it's, uh, if it's Paris, it will not be 85 million dollars. And it's not even finished. That's another way of taking the public wealth. There is a cover. Oh, we're building, you know, a hotel. You know, in, in our government, we spend over 55 billion, with B, billion dollars, preserving outdated technology every year. Useless. 1.4 billion to expand the trolley of San Diego. 1.2 million researching the social habits of monkeys. That's what you call monkey business. <laughs> you know, There is hundreds of buildings, which is something interesting, owned by the Veteran Affairs. Part of the Veteran Affairs in the United States, we spend over $175 million to maintain these properties, which is completely abandoned for decades. Some of them I saw a picture, everyone was doing a little bit of research, are the place for druggies and like, 1.8 million of U.S. taxpayer dollars went for a museums for neon signs in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's just crazy. I can go on. And by the way, that's in America. <laughs> if I talk about Egypt, if I talk about Saudi Arabia, if I talk about Yemen, if we talk about like, you know, that's another ball game. There's nobody even count there. It's a sad, and, and I, ha I have to say that, and he deserved that with all the reservation. But I have to give it to the to the government of Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, the the, the new government. They, be, you know, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. When you hear how much money they collected from just several individual billions and billions and billions of dollars from handful of people, because its money was taken. It's just the amount of wasting money. A friend of mine, okay, he's a, he's a contractor. 
He said, Sheikh Walid, uh, there is a big university in Riyadh called uh, Nura University. So it's a woman university. So he took a project in it. Okay? He, he took the project, he bid on it, he got the bid. Then what he did, he gave it to a subcontractor, just a young uh, guy who's Pakistani, I think, at that time. He made a deal with him. So these, that's how it works. So every square foot, by square foot, let's say. So he sold them the square foot for uh, 12 uh, rails. 12 euros. Okay. He got the bed to be what? 28 rails. So he got 28 dollars for every square foot. He sold it to the subcontractor for 12. Okay. And so how much he makes for every square foot? Huh? Fifteen dollars just he's sitting home doing nothing. I said, how can you do that? He said, ah, what he do you know how much the square foot was sold originally? Like from the government to the top guy. He said, I am here. How much he got it? 25 reals. Remember. Okay? 25 reals. How much the square foot was up here? 860 or something like that. From 800 or 700, something like that, some crazy number like that, all the way to 7, to 25. All the way down. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's just unheard of. And that's why I fully support that, you know, uh, 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 work in, in, in the corruption and, and that it's been going on in, in some of the Gulf areas. In, in the, that, that area, it is something 100% I know of. I, everybody knows it. It's haram. I mean, how can you? This is the wealth of the people. The saddest part is not this. This is bad, but there is worse than that, which is what I hear sometimes of how the wealth of the communities are wasted too. The money is wasted, of the donations, of the awqaf. Like when I hear, for example, and waqf, waqf, people donated $300,000 to waqf. Then I hear that this $300,000, there is $100,000 of it gone because they were putting in stocks. Without permission, without telling people, by the way, your money is in, in, on the stocks or anything. And it's not any stocks. The st there is a stock. We all have awqaf, all Muslim organization. We don't have in Korea Lake. But I mean, so many organizations. But when you put in, you invest the stocks, you don't lose it. You put it in a certain, you know, a portfolio that it guarantee almost, you know, you don't, even if you lose, you lose based, it, it fluctuates. No, no, I'm talking about the stocks, that, the type of, of a trade that you can lose everything. It's like gambling. How can you allow yourself to do that? In one of the Muslim conferences, we got a comedians, a comedians here in Houston. But the organization is not from Houston. This comedians paid a quarter million dollars to show up for less than 60 minutes. Or almost a quarter, almost $250,000. That's public wealth. This organization, I donated for it before, we support. When they did that, they called me. I still remember, and said, Sheikh Walid, by the way, there is a, there is a pledge you, know, you guys have for us. I said, I have nothing for you. Actually, if you can bring me the $2,000 that I gave you three years ago, I would love that. Why? I said, you don't deserve it. I don't trust this money where it goes. I donated for a specific reason. It is sad. It's sad. When you hear that this is a waste of the money, 
We raised money, for example, for the hurricane. You remember? Yeah, some of those money people have crazy idea about it. One guy said, hey, we want to use this funds for business that he is doing. Alhamdulillah, and at least we have decency usage. No, haram, no, no. It, it, it just, sometimes, and I say this because I want it to be on record. I notice also some of people justify for themselves the mishandle of the public money that they take it and they direct it to their own groups, to their own jama'ah, to their own political agenda. And unfortunately, that's very sad. On very high salaries and on all this kind of stuff. And it's a very, very hizbi very, very club kind of, this is my people, this is my group, this is, and, and unfortunately there is an unbelievable amount of sometimes of mishandle of the money when it comes to this area. Public money is serious. And you know, when you hear, for example, also a Muslim organization or some organizations like, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the one who helped the people like um, uh, relief, like relief organizations and stuff like that. When you hear that 70 percent, any 70 cents in a dollar goes to the organization and 30 cents goes to the poor, there is something serious here. I, I'm, not, I'm not against, I understand that there is an amount will go from the dollar that you donate to the organization. That's understandable, that's 100 percent understandable. But 70 percent? It's a big question mark. Another example of wasting the money. By the way, alhamdulillah, still the vast majority. I don't want you to lose trust in Muslim organization. But I want you to verify and to, to make sure that you know, alhamdulillah, there's still a lot of trusted people. A lot. This is percentage, but it is, even if it's 1%, it's still not good. Um, uh, anyway, and that's one of the things, alhamdulillah, in this masjid, whenever we allowed someone to fundraise or we donate to organization, we became way, way, way in the last three, four years verify in a very, very uh, uh, sometimes strict way to ensure that this is, to ensure that we support the organization who cares about things like that. Anyway, uh, you need to move on quickly. One of the things that also wastes, this is the public wealth, is, or the wealth that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah trusted you with the, your orphan's money, okay, or your wife her mahar or her money and you don't care for that and you wasted it and you misuse it and mishandle it and you work so where's the saving well you just you, you you blow it also another format which is sad those who take people's money to invest it he said hey shabab everybody kareem give me a uh, shisma a hundred thousand and you give me a fifty thousand and you give me ten thousand and I will go do a deal for you. And you know what? He's not it's okay if you lose the if you lost the money, you do your due diligence and you lost the money. No, he take the money and he doesn't have a clarity. He work in an area it's not his field, he have no experience, and he, as we say in Arabic, fina. Yani he's learning in our money. من أخذ أموال الناس وهو لا يظن أو لا يرجو رجوعها when I take money from you and I know there is a good possibility you will not have it back لقي الله سارقا will meet Allah as a thief even though I took it with your permission but I deceive you I played you this hadith shows you that your Muslim brothers, it's haram for you to harm them verbally, emotionally, physically, and financially. And this, this just shows how the Sharia care about to protect you from all aspects. The society at large, we should care for that public wealth. 
because in the end of the day that the strength of any country, of any civilization, is directly linked to its strength in the economy before the strength in the military strength. Russia is a military might. You know, might Russia when it comes to the military, we all know. But what is make Russia is not a, 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 a you know, the strongest country in the world is economy. A country like Japan is one of the main player in the world because of the economy. Germany is not a, is not the the, uh, the army. It's, it's the size of their economy. America. America, by the way, what's making America dominate the world is because what? We have 25% of the trade of the world here. The economy of the world. It, it just, that's what to give strength to the, to the country. So that's why, and Islam put all these, like, warn from misusing, mishandling, misstealing uh, from the public uh, wealth. And we should be careful uh, when we deal with that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us and to forgive uh, yani whatever mistakes or mishandling that we ever uh, done. Uh, and I hope don't hold any, uh, don't be too angry at some of the organization or some of the example that I give, but this is reality. And I think, I think we're mature enough to deal with it maturely, you know? And um, as I said, in the end of the day, Alhamdulillah, the vast majority of people are, are, are good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'll leave if there's any questions, otherwise we'll call it for the night, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, Tobin. Uh, so you mentioned that Prophet did not pray in front of the people. Is this something that we need to follow? Or? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not pray janazah on the person who is, uh, took something from the public wealth or ghal from the war booties. And he said, you pray on him. So that means it's a lot, somebody has to pray, but the leaders and stuff like that, no. Um, because let's say somebody known to be a drug addict and drug dealers and stuff, very bad person, and die. You know, maybe it was not the most suitable thing for the imam and the leader of the community to make salah on him. But someone else do. You see, like I, also people need to know that this is like, like I remember incident, somebody came to me and uh, uh, a, a woman that she wanted to marry a non-Muslim guy. And I said, I can't, in Islam you're not allowed to marry a non-Muslim. She said, no, you have to marry me to him. I said, I can't. You can marry him in the court, but not here. She said, I'm suing you. I have money, I'm position, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that. She was very, very rude, actually. I said, no. Anyway, she got angry at me. She left and she, like, threatened. She went to another masjid. <laughs> they did the same thing. Anyway, about less than a year, an imam masjid called me. And he said, Sheikh, you remember this? He reminded me of the lady. I don't remember her name. I said, yeah. And he said, Sheikh, she died. She passed away. And her family brought her to the masjid for Salat al-Janazah. Her husband was not Muslim, brought her. Should, I, should we pray janazah on her or not? I said, yes, she's a Muslim. He said, he said yes. I said, Khas, let them pray. But as an imam, I wouldn't pray on her. To make a, to make a lessons to people, Somebody could openly, it's not like a head and sin, openly and she's challenging and she made a lot of noise after that. I never repented from that, never apologized for that. You can pray in the back on her, you and your family. And that's a lesson. Once I was in the Wano community and I was so embarrassed, man. I was like in the masjid, at Khutbah Juma. And the Imam talked about somebody who died. He committed suicide and was not wise at all. Talk about the suicide, the kill herself, and you know. And he attacked her husband because she had a fight with her husband, and she killed herself because of family problem. You don't do that. You don't. You don't know what's happening. You know. 
mentally not stable, whatever is the issues. Anyway, after all this drama, he goes on the microphone and he said, Sheikh Walid, please, you are our leaders, you're Imam visiting us, you come lead the Salat Janaz on her. <laughs> Why would you put me in the problem? You're your community, bro. I don't, I'm not part of your community. I don't. Anyway, I, 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 I got out of it. I, I said, no. <laughs> you know, and he can, at that point, you cannot say anything. Yeah, but, but it's not wise. It, it's just, it defeats the purpose. The purpose, why the Prophet left this, because until now we talk about it. So you know what? You don't steal. And I know in main center, I refused to pray on somebody because he didn't used to pray. I refused. And his uncle, man, is mashallah, seven feet by three feet. <laughs> yeah, and a huge guy like this wall. He came and he almost like, like start fight with me. The the brother of the deceased. And I said, I'm not gonna pray. You guys pray. His son told me, Sheikh Walid, it was tough. But my uncle, for the first time in my life, first time in my life, I heard him saying about something. Maybe we should pray, because if we don't pray, the Imam will never pray on us. He said, I just want you to know that. So sometimes you leave that just as a uquba, but if you know that if you do it, it will not benefit anyone, or you are no one, yani nobody really, that's Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is like Imam Ahmad, he did pray to him. But you know what, Walid Bishuni, nobody cares who Walid Bishuni is in, in Los Angeles. You know, nobody knows who I am. Khalas. Maybe my masjid people know who I am. But in other community, I'll pray. Yani yeah, if this guy didn't give me that title, blah, 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 I would have prayed. But because he's, oh, Sheikh, oh, Madri Ish, oh. come on, man. So, yeah, so it, it, you have to, to balance that. Here, Uquba. It's, it's a part of You have to apply it when you think it works. Mabniya al Maslah al Mafsada. And by the way, a lot of people like commit suicide not because they are angry at Allah. So many of these because of mental health issues. And those people, there is nothing wrong with praying on them. It doesn't, it's not like the same rule as the people who commit suicide as an angry and, and he doesn't want, he'd have no patience. Wallah sabr, wallah ghadban ala Allah. That's different. The one who has mental issues, just a sick person. Not, not capable of making the right decision. May Allah protect all of us. طيب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته